Right guys, today I'm going to take a look at how to use the Flute Sim software from Festo. So you start by uh, clicking File and New. And New File. And I'm going to do a two cylinder cascade circuit just to demonstrate how it, how it works. So um, drag out your double acting cylinder, drop it down. The double acting cylinder will be controlled using a directional control valve. So you scroll down. Uh, it's a pneumatically operated directional control valve, and you're looking for a 5-2 pneumatically operated directional control valve. Pneumatically operated on both sides. So drag that out. Now, by default, it will try be smart and connect some of the lines together. I generally don't like that, so I, I press the... Um, Deselect, deconnect automatically button here. Um, <clears throat> now I will also just zoom in here a little bit, make things a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to uh, to read. I also also want to put in some limit switches to detect when the cylinder is back and when the cylinder is out. And these are mechanically operated, normally closed three two valves. So that's a 3-2 way roller lever valve which is normally closed and I'd like to rotate it 90 degrees so you right click rotate 90 and normally when we draw out circuits in class the ear I normally have the ear coming in on the left on the limit switch so I'm just going to uh, mirror this guy so I'll go to mirror and mirror about the vertical axis and position it up here roughly where you would have your um, A0 switch connected. Now to make a copy of that you can simply go highlight it, press Control c on the keyboard, Control v and then we get a, a copy. Now to get these guys activated you need to associate a label with the double acting cylinder here. So you double click on the roller and this will be A0 this roller here will be A1. There's a bit typo there. Uh, let me take out the hash symbol. And I generally move them up just a little bit out of the way so they don't kind of obscure the operation of the valve. Now to set up the double acting cylinder, you double click on it. And here you have actuating labels. Click on the actuating labels and the first label we have is A0, and that's going to be activated at zero millimeters, so when the cylinder is fully closed. And the next one is A1, and that's going to be uh, detected or activated when the cylinder is fully out at 100 millimeters. So press OK. And you can see already that the A0 limit switch now has been pressed. You can see the little wedge under it, and the, the bottom box is now active. So I'm going to now connect the left port and I'm going to give the cylinder a little bit of air by bringing the um, the air supply so underneath the supply elements this is your compressed air supply and I just drag that out and drop it down <clears throat> so that's my cylinder and my two um, limit switches just again drag it down a little bit so I can see it better now I'm as I said at the beginning I'm, I'm going to use uh, two cylinders here. So rather than going through and selecting all the components again, I'm simply going to copy this one. So draw a box over it, press copy, click over to the right, and then press paste or control V to, to paste. You can line it up, very helpful little arrows here to line things up. And when you're happy you have it lined up and in position, you can click. Now I need to update the labels here to B. So double click on the double acting cylinder again, go into the actuation labels and simply change it to B. So that will become B0 and this will become B1. And likewise the um, rollers B0 and B1. Now I will also need a start button. 
So a start button is a mechanically operated one. And the first one here on the left is a 3-2 way push button, normally closed. I'm going to drag that out. I need to rotate it. In this case, I'm going to rotate it 270 degrees because I'd like the push button to be on the top. And I'll position it just there. Um, I'm going to put a label on that, actually. So if you double-click, you can, under description, and I'm just going to put in start as the description. Press OK. Now, in previous versions of this, there, there, there has been a, a function on there, a text function in the blocks that you could drag out and you could type in whatever text you uh, you want. I'm sure it's there, but I haven't managed to find it. If any find it, you can drop me a line and let me know where it is. Um, what, what I've been doing is just copying the text here and then pasting it. So control C and control V. And here what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll type in the text. So the sequence will be A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus. Now, if I go through that sequence again, so I have A plus, B plus, that's fine. There's no trap signal there, but here's another B cylinder. So I need to divide that into a group. Then I have B, A minus, and A is at the start, and that can't be in the same group. So I need another group line here. So let's go through with A plus and B plus. Therefore, I need a group line. Just put a couple of spaces there so that you can clearly see the definition between the groups. And then a group line at the end because the A here at the end cannot be in the same group as the A here at the start. Okay. So we have A plus and B plus in group one and B minus and A minus in group two. We know when we have two groups in cascade, we need one less 5-2 valves than the number of groups when we're using that as a group selector. So that means I need one uh, group selecting valve down here at the end. So I highlight, again press Control copy Control v and this will be my group selecting valve. Now you can use manifolds if you want. So one manifold for group one and one manifold for group two. And that's the way we would normally do it in the lab. You would use your manifold. But the way we draw it out, or I've been drawing it out at least in the in the classes that I've been using group lines, straight lines on the bottom. And I'm going to continue using that here because I find it's probably easier for you to, to follow. And you also have the advantage in this software of uh, highlighting the different colors so you can visually see when group one is on and when group two is on. So underneath measurement in instruments and sensors, uh, there's a pressure indicator here. So if you drop out that pressure indicator, um, and we double click it, I'm going to leave it as blue. And the to display, I'm going to say group one. Again, I'm going to make a, a copy of this. So highlight it, control C, control V, drop this down, and I'll change that then to group two. So just double click and change that to a two. And I will also change the color on group two to green. Oh. I'm also going to copy these over to the right hand side as well. So control copy, control V, and position them now. So these are my group lines, group one and group two lines. Uh, and all I have really left to do now is to connect things up. So I'm going to first of all connect up the group line. So from here, to here, that would be group one. It's jumping down underneath the, uh, the directional control valve, so I'll just drop down the directional control valve first because I don't I don't want to step in my um, my line there. So that's group one and group two. And I can tidy that up slightly by just dragging that up. 
and the left-hand side of the directional control valve, that connects to group one, and the right-hand side connects to group two. Okay, so now we can uh, go through our sequence. I'd like to have a slight issue here. This little box is highlighting, tell me that that's not connected. Oh, let me just put that line in again. Okay. So, as always, you start with your start switch, press the start switch, you send a signal to the left-hand side of the 5-2 valve controlling the A-cylinder. The A-cylinder will extend. That will take its air from group 1. The air comes up from group 1. And that will give a signal for the next operation, which is B+. And there's no group change or anything, so you can go straight down here to B+. The B cylinder will extend, it will press the B1 limit switch. It's still in group 1, so it takes its air from group 1. And gives a signal for the next operation, which is the group change, because B plus is the last movement, there's a group change here from group 1 to group 2. So the output from here comes out and selects group 2. Now the first operation in group 2 is B minus. So that must take its signal directly from the group two line. So the signal V minus comes out from the group two line. The cylinder will come back and press the B0 limit switch. Again, this limit switch must take its air from group two and send a signal for the next operation, which is A minus. The A cylinder will retract, and when it retracts, it's going to press the A0 limit switch. Again, this limit switch must take its air from group one. No, oh, sorry, group two. So, the air from here is taken from group two. And A minus is the last operation in that group. So it must be responsible for the changeover back to group one. So the air coming out here changes the air over to group one. So now we're at the end of the sequence. The first operation in group one is A plus. So it takes his air directly from the group line. And because it's also the first um, movement in the sequence, it needs to go through the start switch. So the air from the start switch comes directly from group one. And that's the circuit completed. We can run a simulation now. Uh, if I press the start button here and click on the start switch here, we can see that A extends, presses A1, B extends, presses B1. We have a group changeover highlighted by the green. B retracts and that retracts A. And then A, when it's hit, will have a group change over back over to group one. Uh, to speed up or to slow down the animation, if you click on tools, go to options, and in simulation, you can see there's a slow motion factor. I have it set to 10 at the moment, uh, because you know at one, it's very, very hard to see um, what's really happening there. Um, so we are just using this software at the moment for uh, circuit development and seeing the circuit logic but you can also put physical factors in like speed and loads and so on and then you can probe the different um, lines and so on so for example i can take this pressure probe here and um, let me see, I'll just drop it onto this this line and if i run it again So you can see it's at zero bar at the minute. And you can see the, the, the signal line popping up there. So you can do um, physical analysis, the physics analysis in terms of the speed, the force, uh, and the pressures and so on that are being uh, generated and, and monitor them as they uh, change throughout the sequence. Uh, 
which is very handy. So I'm just letting you know that that functionality is also built in, in there. So hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, pop me an email. Thanks very much.